Welcome back. I would like to discuss today subarachnoid hemorrhage. Why not? Let's start with introduction part. So about 20% of strokes are of hemorrhagic origin and subarachnoid hemorrhage and intracerebral hemorrhage each account for 10%. Subarachnoid hemorrhage occur in subarachnoid space respectively and subarachnoid space is described as a space between arachnoid membrane and pyometer. It consists of the cerebrospinal fluid and the blood vessels that supply different areas of the brain respectively. A subarachnoid hemorrhage is defined as a Accumulation of blood in this space, a space between the uh, arachnoid membrane and pyometer, that is around the brain, referred to as the subarachnoid space. So, in this subarachnoid space is uh, uh, is cerebrospinal fluid, which supply with nutrients, oxygen, and everything that is in need the brain. So the etiology of subarachnoid hemorrhage can be either non-traumatic and traumatic. About 85% are secondary to aneurysm rupture or traumatic in nature. So 85% are uh, due to ane aneurysm rupture, remember this. So most non-traumatic causes which uh, are caused by rupture of this and intracranial aneurysm. The remaining patients, about 15 or 20 percent, uh, presenting with subarachnoid hemorrhage that do not have a vascular lesion on the initial digital uh, sub subtraction or DSA. The classic presentation is often a sudden one set with severe headache or also known as the worst headache uh, of my life that is worst and uh, disturbing all the activities of the patient. You see uh, epidemiology data here. Uh, most of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage occur between ages 40 to 60 years of age and young and uh, children and older adults can be also affected. As we are talking about America or USA, it is most it is uh, more prevalent in the blacks and Hispanics uh, Hispanic populations than in the white Americans. Uh, if to compare female and male there is a slightly higher incidence of aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage in females. And of course, a history of smoking and previously ruptured intracerebral aneurysm are highly associated with uh, new cases or uh, repeated cases. So, as we uh, uh, talked previously, 85% are of non-traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage caused by uh, aneurysm rupture and the remaining 15 to 20 percent have uh, the diverse cause with uh, no identifiable uh, mechanism of bleeding. So the most uh, common causes of non-traumatic uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage as classification uh, is represented by aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage and non-aneurysmal subar subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, causes of uh, SAH has similar risk factors asso associated with aneurysm formation. So hypertension with bulging of the uh, vessel oil, cigarette smoking with uh, predisposition for a plex, a plex on the vessels, 
an occlusion of the vessel and make difference in pressures and a flux of the blood. And family history, of course. Other uh, factors include alcohol, sympathomimetic drugs and estrogen deficiency. Older age, like more than 60 years, uh, posterior circulation location, atherosclerosis, hypertension, large intraarterial aneurysm. It means like uh, more than five millimeter or even a giant one, which is uh, more than 15, 20, 25 millimeters. And a family history, of course, and the presence of aetosomal dominant AD, like polycystic kidney disease, which is associated with subarachnoid hemorrhage or especially with aneurysm. A cerebral one and most common anterior communicating artery aneurysm. So you see also a classification of non aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage like perimesencephalic. Uh, it is characterized by a specific pattern on uh, CT of localized blood, normal uh, cerebral angiography, and a benign course of illness. Uh, this uh, subtype makes uh, up to majority like two thirds of patients. So on CT you can find typically a blood isolated to the perimesencephalic cisterns anterior to the brainstem. Of course you can find on internet location to understand better where is it. Occult aneurysm, another one is a small percentage of cases and not di diagnosed in initial angiographic studies but may be identified on repeated angiography uh, later. The reason are, reasons are technical or reading errors, uh, small aneurysm as uh, a size and obscuration of aneurysm because of vasospasm, hematoma and thrombosis. Um, vascular malformations or abnormal vessel formation. Uh, this can be intracranial or spinal in location. Or even a dural arterial venous fistula. They are usually visualized on cerebral angiography. And dural arterial venous fistula are the most common type of spinal vascular malformation. These arterial venous uh, malformations could be associated with bleeding and it's us usually managed surgically or endovascular interventions with embolizations and closing of these pathological vessels. Another uh, causes of non-aneurysmal type could be intracranial arterial uh, dissection. Also, uh, substance abuse like cocaine, which is associated with aneurysmal and non-aneurysmal type, uh, cerebral amyloid angiopathy. A venous, a cerebral venous thrombosis, sickle cell disorders, moya moya disease, cerebral vasculitis and bleeding disorders are common conditions that cause uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. A pathophysiology part, of course, uh, hemodynamic stress is a most important factor for intracranial aneurysm formation and it is best to take a look at anatomy and where it's, it is uh, formated. It occur at arterial junctions, bifurcations or abrupt vascular angles where excessive hemodynamic stresses are exerted on arterial wall. It typically uh, occur or uh, take place at sites like bifurcation of the basilary artery uh, vertebral artery and arterial communicating artery. Large unruptured aneurysm compress the adjacent uh, cerebral tissue causing 
neurological signs and for these reasons patient can address to the doctor. Also hemodynamic uh, stress to the vessel wall causes increase in blood pressure and other risk factors like aceromatose plaques uh, which are produced and formated at the vessel wall can uh, promote formation and rupture of intracranial aneurysm. And of course, this uh, hemodynamic uh, insult initiates the inflammatory process. Uh, it leads to matrix me uh, metalloproteinases, which make degradation of extracellular matrix and apop apoptosis of smooth muscle cells. And uh, thinning of the vessel and destruction of uh, the cells of the vascular wall. There are many types like secular, fusiform, uh, dolico ectasias. So secular is a pouch like fusiform uh, aneurysms that are dilations of the vessel wall that do not lead to the formation of a separate secular pouch. So dilation through the tract of the vessel, but not a specific pouch like and dolico ectasias uh, are elongated tortoise and sometimes dilated vessel segments. So how you detect this uh, thunderclap headache or the worst headache of my life is in this way is described this headache by patients and frequently it is associated with nausea, vomiting, often projectile one, nuchal rigidity and photophobia, which means that uh, patient uh, avoid because of headache a uh, light meningismus is typically present due to blood extending into the fourth ventricle evaluation and diagnosis of these types of patients LCT in angiography uh, regimen that should be performed if an SAH is identified to determine the location and size of the aneurysm. If the initial head CT is negative, a lumbar puncture is performed in case of strong suspicion. A lumbar puncture, puncture should ideally be performed six hours after the initial head CT to detect the presence of erythrocytes or it is called xanthochromia. Often xanthochromia can be assessed at the bedside due to visible uh, cerebrospinal fluid color change in time you make this puncture. A CT, CT scan in angiographic arrangement uh, helps uh, confirm and identify an intracerebral aneurysm location which is very important. If this one is negative you should be uh, it should be followed by cerebral angiography or DSA or digital subtraction and geography. Uh, time to flight magnetic resonance and geography is another acceptable mode of imaging that does not require contrast uh, injection. But the first one is CT and geography and uh, puncture. And another way to establish diagnosis is DSA. The sensitivity of CT scans and uh, red blood cells counts are time dependent and very sensitive early in the diagnosis. So this loss of sensitivity over time can be due to the brisk physiologic flow of cerebrospinal fluid. Over time, red blood cells are present in the cerebrospinal fluid undergo uh, lysis, resulting in breakdown products such as bilirubin and oxyhemoglobin. And uh, RBC or red blood cells uh, lysis explains that xanthochromia becomes uh, increasingly sensitive after a few hours. So, what is the treatment of this uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage? So, patients should be uh, organized accordingly to the severity of the disease. 
and generally uh, speaking management include medical measures like interventional uh, radiology options like endovascular coiling or a direct surgical clipping uh, this uh, days uh, planning for uh, endovascular coiling and a closing of this aneurysm Patients are typically treated with both medical and interventional options. More conservative or less invasive interventions may be sufficient for patients with grade 1 or 2 of subarachnoid hemorrhage. So the key uh, goals are prevention of re-bleeding, delayed cerebral, uh, cerebral ischemia, supportive care, pain management and accurate diagnosis and treatment. Osmotic diuretics like mannitol and anti-hypertensive uh, medications for blood uh, pressure control are required to stabilize the patient before endovascular uh, interventions. More aggressive forms and extensive uh, cares that may include intubation and mechanical ventilation to protect airway and support respiratory effort in patients with decreased levels of consciousness. It is often uh, recommended to place an um, invasive arterial line for close monitoring of blood pressure. Other interventions may include an indwelling urinary catheter and seizure prophylaxis or uh, treatment in times that they, this occurs. Hydrocephalus is present in up to 30% of patients with intravascular hemorrhage. And the proposed mechanism is a blockage of the cerebrospinal fluid flow. And this requires a little bit more uh, blood, not just uh, a little bit more blood, of course. And inflammatory reaction occurs also due to the presence of blood in the cerebrospinal fluid. And this inflammatory reaction eventually lead to fibrosis of arachnoid granulations and blockage or cleaning depends on the capacity of the person. So in patient with a significant subarachnoid hemorrhage and a higher, more severe clinical grade the incidence of rebleeding is high and uh, admission to the intensive care unit is urgent. Hydrocephalus often occurs within the first three days post hemorrhage. At this time, placement of intraventricular external drainage device is recommended to relieve the elevated intracerebral pressure. So approximately 60% of patients with subarachnoid hemorrhage have radiographic vasospas, defined as vasoconstriction and or narrowing of the cerebral arteries, evident with cerebral angiography with or without clinical signs and symptoms. So uh, one third or even more patients will have clinical manifestations of vasospas. And of course, vasospas means that uh, some segments of the vessels will be constricted and uh, blood will be reduced to these areas and redirected to another one. A transcranial Doppler sonography is used to detect, for detecting and monitoring vasospas. A CT angiography and CT perfusion can detect arterial narrowing or perfusion asymmetry. Electroencephalography, continu continuous electroencephalography can be useful to detect subclinical seizures or non-convulsive status epilepticus. A frequency of narrow checks. Patients with acute subarachnoid hemorrhage should be carefully examined every one to two hours, especially during a high-risk period of for delayed uh, cerebral ischemia. A development of neurologic deficit should be evaluated with an urgent head CT scan. So, appearance of new neurological signs uh, should uh, suggest you to do an urgent CT scan of the head to identify, of course, in a 
depending on the period, uh, re-bleeding, vasospasm, cerebral infarction, hydrocephalus. So uh, digital subtraction angiography can be used in place of CT angiography in situations of high suspicion. Intracranial pressure monitoring it is recommended to perform to per, uh, perform a ventricular stomy in patients with enlarged ventricles on CT. And of course, uh, WFNS scale score more than three. It also serves as uh, treatment by drainage of cerebrospinal fluid when appropriate. A blood pressure control. Uh, most of these uh, types of patients have increased blood pressure and you need to reduce or decrease this one and maintain a systolic blood pressure to the values less than 160. The risk of rebleeding is highest in the first 24 hours of the initial hemorrhage and carries a very high mortality rate up to 80%. Pain medication may help to decrease the blood pressure and promote patient comfort. Nitrates and nitroproceed have fallen out of favor as first-line agent for blood pressure control. And of course, toxic side effects if it, they are used for a long time or prolonged uh, infusions. Labetalol and hydralazine are often the favorite intermittent dosing medications, whereas nicardipine, uh, clavidipine are continuous infusions used for blood pressure control. And many of the hospitals uh, these days are using uh, calcium channel blockers, which are uh, normodipine or nimodipine, which are very effective with uh, effects on cerebral vessels especially. Labetalol is a beta blocker and alpha at the same time that may be administered over two minutes in doses ranging from 5 to 20 mg intravenously every 15 minutes. Hydralazine, nicardipine, clavidipine, you see all of them which can be infused or administered in uh, titrated doses or through the continuous infusion and monitoring the blood pressure in times that you need to increase or decrease infusion uh, rate. So vasospasm prevention is very important and for this reason uh, categories of uh, drugs like calcium channel blockers which are nemodipine uh, uh, calcium channel blockers or uh, CCBs uh, reduce cardiac and smooth muscle contraction without an effect on skeletal uh, muscle and mitigate the abnormal vasoconstriction of cerebral vascular smooth muscle. Oral administration is also good, but intravenous have immediate effect. So oral uh, nemodipine is given in doses of 60 milligrams every four hours or 30 milligram every two hours for 21 days. So this treatment should be administered for a long time, like three weeks without interruption for prevention of uh, re-bleeding and vasospasm, of course. In the same time, we decrease uh, blood pressure, not only prevent vasospasm. If hypotension is a, is a problem or is a recurring problem, recommendation is to d diminish or uh, administer smaller doses or less frequent. Magnesium sulfate has shown to have mixed results on neuroprotective and its vasodilatation properties. And also, uh, so, so uh, magnesium demonstrated that uh, some studies demonstrated that magnesium was not superior to a placebo in reducing poor outcomes after subarachnoid hemorrhage. Another uh, drugs like endocellin antagonists, clazosentan, uh, which are uh, selective uh, endocellin antagonist A receptor, 
when demonstrated a decrease and a reversal in vasospasm after uh, SAH or subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, statins lack of efficacy. They are good for decreasing uh, cholesterol, but not for treating vasospasm. Anticoagulants, it is recommended to discontinue all antithrombotic agents and reverse all anticoagulation until the aneurysm is definitively repaired by surgery or cooling. So you cannot anticoagulate patient if this one have hemorrhage. Also, an acceptable uh, clinical practice is to initiate pharmacological prophylaxis therapy uh, 24 to 48 hours after surgery with unfractionated or low molecular weight heparins. A pain control is very important and is the essential aspect of patient care. So as patient complains with the worst headache of my life, it is the primordial to give patient medication for a pain. Non-opioid medications such as acetaminophen or paracetamol, as you see dosage like uh, 650 mg per oral or 1 gram intravenously are first line medications and be administered every 4 to 6 hours. However, con consideration must be given to contraindications like liver disease. NSAIDs like aspirin should be avoided until the aneurysm is secured. Opioid medications such as fentanyl every hour as needed, uh, diluted, uh, dehydromorphine, uh, uh, morphine sulfate. So if patient have uh, acute and very, uh, very bad headache, you have to give uh, opioids and do not joke with this as pain increase blood pressure and increase risk of bleeding. Surgical management, once and subarachnoid hemorrhage or rupture is identified, repair with uh, clipping or endovascular uh, coiling is the only effective treatment and should be performed as yearly as feasible and even within 24 hours. So some expert uh, centers report a median time to aneurysm repair of 7 hours from admission. Of course, if patient in, if is in a severe uh, state, it should be uh, stabilized in intensive care and after address it to a surgical procedure. You have to make a differential diagnosis with meningitis of bacterial or tuberculosis origin, granulomatous meningitis, neurosarcoidosis uh, and pseudo-subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage. Here you see uh, complications, most common vasospasm, re-bleeding and hydrocephalus more often. So in first three days, you have to be careful with vasospasm, three to 10 days re-bleeding and more to one month hydrocephalus. Also patient can have uh, next uh, complications like seizures, increased intracranial pressure, brain herniation, cerebral infarction, and even uh, pulmonary edema of uh, neurogenic or as origin and death, of course. Especially in the first days, uh, mortality is high. Yearly uh, and high mortality rate. That's a pity. So, uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, caused uh, by aneurysm related to initial bleeding, re bleeding, vasospasm, and delayed cerebral ischemia, uh, hydrocephalus, increased intracranial pressure, seizures, and cardiac complications. Uh, this one are uh, acute or yearly uh, signs and complications, and long term complications include. Uh, neurocognitive dysfunction, epilepsy, and other focal neurologic deficits. Thank you for your attention and hope this information is useful for you and can help in your study or medical practice. Have a great time, guys.